The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Hold on to your hats, folks, because it's going to be a wild one out there. We got CPI running hotter than expected, and the market's not liking that so far, man. You're down 70 points in the S&Ps. That is 1.4% from where we closed out yesterday's action. And pretty remarkable that you've given up almost 100 points just like that, folks, from the highs we had yesterday, man. You talk about a little volatility, man. We get a little bit of a shock today. We're going to have plenty to talk about this hour, man. Stay tuned. S&P's down by, as I said, 70 points, 1.4% in the red. NASDAQ 100, so much for 18,000. Down 326 points. That's a drop of 1.8%, trading at 17,637. Now, for some context here, we're only back to where we were trading at last Wednesday, okay? But nonetheless, quite a drop. The Dow off about 1% right now, 38,494. And how about the Russell off by 3 3.5%. 3.5%, folks, down 71 points. The Russell is down more than the S&P right now, and the Russell is under 2,000, and the S&Ps are trading at almost 5,000, down 3.5%. Be careful that Russell, man. If the economy is doing well, why is the Russell having such a big problem? Crude, little volatility. Crude up 66 cents right now, trading at 77.57. We take a look at the gold contract. Well, what's happening? We know what's happening, folks. When you have gold down like that, what's the dollar doing? You know what it's doing. It's going through the roof, baby. We're going to get to it. Gold down $18 at 2014. Quite a drop from where it was at 2045. But that's what's going to happen when you see this kind of drop in the price of the 10-year. We're down almost a full point from where you were trading. We got a 109 handle in the 10-year at 109.29. You're talking about right now down 26 ticks in the 10-year. That is putting the 10-year yield at 4.28%. 4.28, man. We're going to make a run back to 5? I'm not saying that, okay? That's a long way from where we are right now. Pretty remarkable. We're at 4.28. We were sitting at almost 3.8% not that long ago. Take a look at this thing on a daily, man. Right? Look at this. We're now through the 382. The 0.50 is 109.10. The 0.618 is 108.25. And that 108 excuse me, 108.12, that 108.12, folks, look for that area. That was a little bit of an area where you chopped around in November, also an area that you made a little bit of a short-term high back in October. That would bring you back to the point, excuse me, the 618 retracement of the run we had in October. And maybe that's what sets the stage. Maybe the market needs a little bit of further uh, recalibration of rates, which is driving so much what's going on is we're sitting at 4.28 right now on the 10-year. Think about that, right? Now, here's the thing that you want to consider as well. So we're off of 3.8, which was literally made like February 1st, man. Okay? Yields, I'll have to get a yield chart. Maybe somebody can help me on the den. But I'm pretty sure on February 1st, we were approaching a yield of 3.8%. And by February 13th, folks, we're trading with a yield of 4.3%. Now, the point being, on February 1st, okay, on February 1st, Here's the turnaround in the market to a degree. The market was trading at 48.77. So you're telling me that the 10-year has went up half a percentage point, and over that period of time, we still have the market up 100 points from where you were trading at right then. We got a lot of Fibonacci's on this. Let's take them off. Those are short-term Fibonacci's. But yeah, pretty remarkable. You've had that reversal in V yields. Now, what's happened since then? You've had gangbuster earnings from some of the tech companies out there. Okay, so that's the reason why on the earnings front, Things have accelerated higher. But keep in mind that this market is still well above where you were when we had the 10-year at 3.8%. You might see a little bit of a calibration today uh, that has already begun, and we will see where the day brings us. The dollar, you're right at the 618, just like that, man. Dollar at 104.81. You see the run that the dollar has had from January, and you even see the run if you zoom it in from where we were in February. There's the February. Okay, so you got the dollar up basically two full points from 103 to 105, and in that same time frame, you still have the market higher. 
powered by earnings in the biggest companies out there, which matter, but be careful, okay? Even sitting where we are, which is why you're getting the type of move that we're getting right now, okay? This market has traded higher in a way that we have not seen on many fronts, folks, okay? S&Ps, we were looking at about 41.22 potentially in the S&Ps. Maybe we got as, five, as close as 5,066 because this is put a, gonna put a little fear in this market to put it lightly. All right, we talked about the dolly. Got to check out the VIX this morning, right? There's a spike for you. Now, we've made it to this level a couple times before, right? Check it out. December, we were up at 1449. We're, uh, excuse me, 1473. January 5th, 1458. We're up, we're above both those highs. January 17th, we had a 15 handle, 1540. January 29th, you made it up to 1535 before we paired it a bit. So we're kind of coming right, right up to those recent highs. We'll see if uh, the market can save itself. But I don't think it's going to save itself today as this is a little bit of a wake-up call for the CPI and where the Fed is going to be as we go forward. It seems like the stage is getting set where May is even going to be a little difficult. Now, as we get into the data, okay, there's your headline print. Consumer prices rise 0.3% in January. The annual rate was 3.1%. They were really hoping for a two-handle, okay? The problem is we're stuck. <laughs> June of 2023, we were at 3%, folks, and we're at 3.1. You had the uptick to 3.7. We're now at 3.1. We're in February of 2024. That was June of 2023. Now, those are all items, okay? On the core front, yes, less food and energy. We're making declines. But look at from September to February, we're going to go 4.1 to 3.9. We still got two full percentage points to go, and it's going to get tougher as you get to 2%. Now, I understand that, you know, people have been saying for a long time, things could get sticky at around 4%, 3%, right? The last mile is going to be the toughest. Core is still at 4%. That's not the last mile. The last mile might be going from 2.5 to 2 it's not going from 4 to 3.5. Yes, it's more difficult than when we were back here at above 6, okay? But we have gone from 4.1 to 3.9 over the period of what? September, October, November, December, and now January numbers is which we just got for CPI. Pretty remarkable. And they were looking for 0.2% and 2.9%. When you take a look at the core, 0.4% in January. 3.9% we just looked at, but 0.4%. Market was looking for 0.3. Folks, you multiply 0.4 times 12, and you got 4.8% annualized on a 30-day uh, trailing basis. Pretty remarkable. Now, shelter, a huge component of what's going on, and we've talked about this on the program before. You have the CPI, consumer prices, shelter, a much bigger component in CPI than is in the PCE, which is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. Uh, gauge. Shelter was up 0.6% on the month, contributing more than two-thirds of the headline increase on a 12-month basis, shelter up 6%. Shelter is not as big of a component of PCE, so keep that in mind. The Fed gets three PCE reports before the May meeting, okay, three. They're probably going to, what are they going to get? They're going to get February, March, and April before that May meeting, I believe. So we have a lot of data to come before that May meeting, but this was not helpful, to put it lightly. Food prices higher as well, up 0.4%. Energy offsets some of that, down a bit. 3.3% uh, slide in gasoline. But guess what? That's not going to help us going forward, man. We got gas at 77 bucks, crude oil. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network Fast Market. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 65 points right now. NASDAQ 100 off 321. You got the Russell off by 3.4%. And even on a daily basis, Look at this red bar sticking out, man. We haven't had many of these since the run began in October on October 27th. 41.30 up to 5,066. Now, this A to B, C to D, folks, pretty remarkable. It's – I got to back it up a little bit further than that even. There's your three-year three -year weekly. Your A to B leg is 1,000 points. Very simple. I just cherry-picked the 3,600. Back in October of 2022, you take the B point here of 4,600. 4,600 minus 3,600, simple math of about 1,000. And the reason why I bring it up is because you're almost – the C point, if you ballpark it, right, is almost at about 4,100. Okay, that was the 50% retracement. It would have been about 4,100. And where did we just get to? 5,066, almost 5,100. You almost had a 1,000-point run. The first 1,000 points off of the low went from October until about August 1st, July 31st, the week of. Okay, so you're talking about what? Seven – eight, nine, 10, almost 10 months versus we just completed the thousand points, folks. It almost started in November, three months, three and a half. You had a 10 month run off the low, which should have been the easiest one because, you know, cherry picking the lows, if you could ever find the low, right? The, the first bounce is always the biggest usually after a dramatic market pullback. But no, we just traded up a thousand points. So be careful in this market, man. Uh, context is important in terms of where we've been, where we are in this market, how quickly we got there, and how quickly things are changing in terms of some of the data that we're getting and the drop off. You got a little bit of a bounce going, seven points to the upside on the S&P off that low of about 49.70, and we got 10 minutes to go until the opening bell. Let's take a look at some of the analysis out here. Uh, I'm gonna go through some of the numbers, and this is just random takes from different people that Bloomberg's got, but I agreed with this one. Skylar Weenand, not familiar, but Dallas-based chief investment officer at Regan Capital. I like this take, okay? Think about this take. Rate cuts are not justified in the near term as GDP, wage growth, unemployment, and inflation are all pointing to an economy that continues to run hot. As long as these numbers are hot, cuts are not justified by any other metric other than recency bias, okay, of near term zero, excuse me, near zero interest rates as investors are still stuck on the idea that rates should always remain low. That might not be the case, folks, and it definitely might not be the case when you think about the productivity gains, gains 
and the economic growth that is possible with the power of AI. I mean, we're seeing it, man. Microsoft's Azure said 6% of their Azure growth had to do with AI. These are real numbers when they put that something, something out like that during an earnings call. And the market thinking that somehow the Fed needs to be dramatically lower as a normal nature of the market, I think we're getting a lesson here that that might not be the case. Okay, we're used to the fact that, hey, you hiked so far, so fast, you got to come back down pretty fast, right? No, you do not have to, okay? That's one of the things that you at least have to consider. All right, things are sticky, and, and, and we might be in a new normal, folks, because, you know, near zero interest rates is not how things are supposed to go. This market is on fire, man. AI is taking everything to the cleaners, okay? The economy is strong. The consumer is showing it. Yes, there's weakness areas showing up, okay? There are. I get it. But all the pressure on the cuts does have to come with the fact that we believe that interest rates should be near zero because we were there for almost 20 years. And maybe that's not where things should be going forward for a healthy economy. So keep that one in your mind, because I like that take. The only metric that points to cuts is the fact that near zero interest rates are where we were recently. And I think that's, a, I think that's very true, because if we were not near that, we wouldn't be thinking about that at all, man. You know, we'd be saying, ah, the Fed's at five and a half percent, but this economy's on fire, right? Now, look at these numbers, man, when we talk about where we are. You talk about deviation to the forecast, okay? We are just beating over and over and over across the board. Over and over and over across the board, we are beating. Let me turn to find some of those more, yeah. Yeah, everything is hotter than hoped for. Another take, another CFO at uh, Premier Milton Investors, Mitten Investors, Neil Farrell, not familiar as well. Now, check out this. I wanted to talk about Supercore, okay? And Kevin Hanks is going to be joining us uh, tomorrow. Got tied up. That was him texting, saying, man, sorry, I want to be on today. Got tied up with a little bit of emergency. He's going to be on tomorrow. Don't forget to check out Fast Market from the Schwab Network at 12 noon every day. I'm sure today is going to be an interesting one, man, with this market. Who knows where we'll be by 12 o'clock. Take a look at Supercore. Now, Supercore excludes housing, okay? What do we say was one of the biggest factors in CPI, if not the biggest? if not the biggest, it was the biggest, 0.6% on a month, contributing more than two thirds of the number to the headline, okay? And look what happens when you even just take out housing though. Super core, okay, that is core services prices, excluding housing, so that's basically core CPI, you take out housing as well, right? So that's gonna be the headline minus food and energy, which is usually what you take out for core, and then minus housing on top of it, right? We are in an up uptick since October. We need to get back to 2%. We're stuck at four, and that takes out housing. So don't blame it all on housing, man. Pay attention to that super core. Check it out, diving deeper into the super core inflation figure. What's driving it? Transportation services, you know why? Car insurance. Public transportation index also eased less than in December. Folks, I was just talking to somebody about this. I had this conversation, I think, on the air. My car insurance just went up by 50% in Florida. 50%. Bonkers. Okay? I was paying. I have almost a five-year-old car. Great car. BMW. Five-year-old car. I think I was, and I do have an accident from like four years ago. It's about to roll over. But just for the numbers to put it out, man. I was paying about 1200 bucks over a six month period, so about $200 a month for my insurance, and it literally just went up to $1,900 for no reason. And I'm with Progressive right now. I called around, of course, to get some quotes. Nope, no deal. They're all at around 1900 now. I'm saying, how, how do people deal with that? That is a 50% rise, and now I'm paying 300 bucks a month for insurance for my car? That's That's, recognize what is going on folks because that is a real factor in inflation that is out of control and do you remember when chairman powell was on 60 minutes and i came on the next day and i talked about one of the things he said and the thing that struck me the strongest about what he said was we have to get back to a period of time where nobody even thinks about inflation 
right? Nobody's worried about it. Nobody's thinking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Okay, we were there for 20 years and we got to get back there. And I said to myself, wait a second, everybody's talking about it. I can't imagine where we need to go to get inflation out of people's vocabulary, okay? And this is another example of how far we are from that point. So heed the chairman's words, man, because in insurance is a real deal. Now, you want to talk about housing insurance, we have a disaster going on in Florida there as well. If you're in Florida, folks, get a citizen's quote. That's all I can tell you, because that goes into it as well. But this car insurance deal, I mean, in the den, if you can give me give me some anecdotals out there in the den, if you don't mind, if people are dealing with it, what's going on outside of Florida? Because that number is not just in Florida, man. OK, super core. One of the things driving super core car insurance. I mean, come on, man. There are so many pockets here to dig into. All right, folks, we just started. We're coming back for the opening bell. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about this hour. Don't go away. We'll be back in three minutes, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the opening bell. Stock market is open, and we got S&Ps right near session lowest, man. Pretty remarkable. We've been chopping around at about 49.70 for the last half hour, and we are trading at 49.72. That Russell, man, down by 3.6% at 1981. You got the NASDAQ 100 right now off about 8 tenths percent in the red. You got the, excuse me, that was the Dow off 8 tenths percent in the red. You have the NASDAQ 100 off 2%. 
Okay, off 358 points, and let's jump around to some of the biggest companies in the world. We'll kick it off with Microsoft. Talk about a give back for you, 2.4%. I mean, just like that, folks, Microsoft, from where it was yesterday morning, is off $15. Remarkable. You're off 2.4% right now for Microsoft shares. That probably gives up $3 trillion, right? Where you at? Nope, they still got it. 3.01 to the smallest margins for Microsoft shares. You jump over to Apple shares. They're off of 1% right now to 185.47. We jump over to Amazon. There's a drop for you, 3.4%. My goodness, from 175 to 166 for Amazon shares. We jump over to, let's check out some of the other FANG stocks. How about Google? Down 2.1%. The poster boy, off 3.5%. NVIDIA shares. How about ARM? Even ARM gives back, down 3.3%. Quite the day for them, quite the week for them, back to last Wednesday. But even ARM, look at that volatility, man. Down 3.2% for ARM after quite the acceleration yesterday. Continuing that acceleration. Let's check out Netflix shares, down a percent right now. Disney shares down four tenths percent. We jump around to some other growth stuff. Yeah, Salesforce down three point. Look at these numbers, man. Just mammoth companies just getting absolutely axed on the open. Tesla down by 2.3% at 183.66. You know, the other thing on Tesla, man, to keep your eye on, depending on how this goes with the compensation committee and whatnot, and if Elon gets paid, Elon's going to be in a tough spot if he gets a margin call and this thing gets down to somewhere around those recent lows of 100. And that is not out of whack if we start getting these types of moves in the market. So be careful. All right, what else we got? Jumping around to some of the other takes in terms of what we're dealing with here. You know, one of them's talking about that they're going to be coming into election season. Now, it's easy to say it. I don't think it's going to phase Powell. This is, this is you know... He got asked this question on 60 Minutes. He gave the textbook answer in saying, you know, are you uncomfortable raising rates during a political season? Are you worried about doing it coming into an election? And his answer was textbook, of course, okay, which I'm sure he has worked on. It's a very important question in his position. Whether you believe it or not, that's your deal, right? But if you think about somebody's legacy, folks, okay, and as the chairman of the Federal Reserve going through this period of time where you have generational inflation happening for the first time ever, he caught a lot of heat for being the reason why that happened late to the party, right? They really, they were talking about transitory. They weren't aggressive in the beginning of it. His legacy is at stake. And I don't think he's going to be too worried about taking heat on the politics. And boy, he's going to take it. You know he is, okay? Uh because his answer makes a lot of sense, too. He says, you know, of all the variables that we're dealing with trying to get this right, this is his answer in terms of the, the economy, of all the details that we have to factor in, of everything we're looking at, if we start trying to make sure that we also factor in the politics of things, it almost makes it impossible. And I don't think he used the word impossible, but that was the point, okay? And it makes sense, man, all right? We're seeing how difficult this is to get inflation under control, even though the Fed has been tighter for longer than the market even thinks, right? What if the Fed was ever listening to the market? What if the Fed was listening to the market and we already had cuts going on and we were getting these types of numbers, right? You see the worry that they have, okay? They're probably coming around election time, man. Um, you know, and they make the point here. What's also uncomfortable is that the further into the year the first rate cut comes, the closer the election it's going to be. It's going to happen, man. Uh, we're not getting it right now. I mean, maybe if we get some really nice, friendly PCE numbers for the next three months, you might be able to get May. But that's pushing it right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Because these numbers are everywhere, man. I mean, you look at some of the food numbers they were talking about in here. Okay, let me see if I can find this one before I jump around. Yeah, we talked about food. Yeah, here we go. In terms of food, you had ham falling the most, 3.4%. If you include canned ham, that was down 3.1%. All the other meats were basically flat, all right? Now you look at hospitals, and this one's really interesting. A big jump in hospital and related services prices. They rose 1.6% in January, the largest monthly increase since 2015. Outpatient hospital services climbed 2%, the biggest increase ever, according to the BLS. Now, hospital and healthcare costs in particular, folks, are a much bigger component of PCE than they are of CPI. 
So that is not a good indication when you go forward to the PCE numbers. Then what happens? You look at energy prices, okay? Gas prices have come down. Electricity, electricity accelerated in January, the fastest pace since July of 2022. That probably weather-related, all right? But what they talk about in here as well, I'm not sure if I'm at the right point in this, they got a lot they talk about, is, and I'll find it after this break if I don't find it here, is the energy prices, okay? Yeah, I think it's a little bit lower. Let me see if I find it. Because what they talk about was energy has been helpful. If energy turns around and starts being a problem, boy, you better watch out because that's going to be, as they call it, the trifecta or something like that, where you basically got everything going up. Here it is. Worth considering the role that energy played in anchoring January's inflation read. Okay, Oil prices has so far shrugged off the Middle East. If that was to change and energy costs jumped. Now, I'm going to pause there to give you a look at energy prices. Okay. We are pushing the upper boundary that we've been in for the last year. Yes, you got a spike in September above to a $95. Okay. But on a monthly basis, that's September. In December, we were trading at 67. Okay, you put this thing on a daily, you're getting higher highs and higher lows in this crude market. So with that in context, if that was to change and energy costs jumped, it would complete the trifecta for households where you would have food, shelter, and energy costs that would all be higher. We just talked about healthcare is going up in the same degree. So, boy, there's a lot out there, man, when you put it in that degree, right? Pretty remarkable that it's almost hotter everywhere. You talk about super core. We talked about energy. We've talked about food. We've talked about shelter. We've talked about hospitals. It's a tough one out there, folks. Um, and, boy, this market has gotten ahead of itself yet again, it seems like. Yeah, we talked about the politics out there. Nearly all major basic categories for consumers increased at a faster pace or stayed firm in January. Pretty remarkable, man. While gas prices decelerated, electric bills were higher, grocery prices higher, particularly for dairy, fruits, vegetables, and beverages. Shelter prices reaccelerated. Used car prices eased, but the price to insure a car was higher. So there goes that one. Daycare and tuition prices increased at a faster pace. It's remarkable, man. I keep saying it is remarkable. All right, let's jump around as we come into the next break coming up. Let's see where we are in yields right now. You got the 10-year. Down by 23 ticks. We're bouncing slightly off the lows, but pretty much right where we were in that first move. We're talking about a 10-year yield of 4.27%. We jump over to the dollar, 104.73 for the dollar. S&P's off by 60 right now. We jump over to the VIX, V-I-X, 14.50. Not even 15 yet. Folks, stay tuned. We'll take a look at some of the other equities that are moving, some of the numbers with their earnings that have coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, pretty much where we accelerated to on that number. We're down by 68 points right now. NASDAQ 100, we're down by 1.8%. You get the Dow accelerating, making lows right now as we speak, off by 1.2% now, 450 points in the red. And you get the Russell down by 3.3%. We jump around to some of the companies. So Paramount, the, uh, they, they had quite the streaming and I guess just uh, television audience. Let's get up with the number. What is it, 123 million or something like that? What is it? 123 million viewers, the most ever television show ever. Super Bowl 58, most watched television show in history, 123.4 million. Um, that, that includes viewers across all platforms, up 7% from last year's 115 million viewers, which was also a previous record. The NFL just gets it done, man. Yeah. Do you know there wasn't even a halftime show until, I think it was 1993? And what happened was is that you had Fox air a live show of in living color during the halftime that stole like 12 or 15 million viewers or something like that and the next year they had michael jackson and there you go imagine that um 93 it doesn't seem that long ago it is 31 years ago so i'm dating myself uh, but pretty remarkable when i was 12 years old watching the super bowl they didn't have a halftime show i think that that speaks to my age more than the nfl's nonetheless uh 123 million and it was interesting. So I signed up for Paramount. And here's the kicker of this, okay? Paramount, I signed up for them because I don't have standard cable. Okay, I cut the cord. We just have about every streaming option in the house. Paramount is CBS, of course, so you could subscribe to Paramount. They gave a seven-day free trial. I plan on probably canceling it because we just got too many streaming platforms as is. So I didn't even have to pay for it. But guess what they got? They got my viewer numbers, right? So it's interesting how that goes because I found myself saying, hey, this is going to be interesting how this goes. When you got companies like Paramount, they're pushing their streaming service for such an event like the Super Bowl. They pay so much money for that. Is this going to turn into something that eventually it's almost going to be like some of these events will be pay-per-view? Because it seemed like I was getting a bargain, man. I signed up for Paramount, used my seven-day free trial, paid absolutely nothing, could watch the Super Bowl for free. I don't pay for cable. The last part of that, though, is that they get to serve me ads, right? And they're selling those ads at seven million bucks a pop for 30 seconds. But it seems like maybe that business model might even change from there, right? It seems like maybe these type of events, are they going to start turning into like an elevated premium pay-per-view product? I don't know. Not if they sell ads to that degree. But nonetheless, interesting. Paramount, though, they're laying off workers. Yeah, let's get the headline up for them today. They're laying off 800 employees a day after announcing those record ratings. 3% of their workforce, according to people familiar. Um, 
they warned of the impending layoffs in an internal note last month, so they gave the heads up there. They are, want to operate as a leaner company and spend less, is what they say going forward. And so they're laying off eight, 800 people. They ended 2022 with about 24,500 people. And yeah. So let's see. They got Paramount Global on CBS, Paramount, Pluto, Paramount Plus, Nickelodeon, BET, and Comedy Central. That's what they got out there. They got merger talks going on with Skydance Media. Yeah, Warner Brothers Discovery and CNBC has reported that. They lost $238 million in the third quarter. It's a tough, tough area to compete in, man. And it says a lot that I had no plans of keeping that subscription. And I, am, I got almost all of them right now, man. Well, you got Prime, Netflix, Disney. No, I'm missing some. We'll keep going. Nonetheless, Paramount down 2.8% on a pretty negative day uh, with the market, of course. You jump over to some of the other streamers. Netflix down about a percent right now. Disney shares down 0.4%. You jump over to Meta. They're talking about Meta in the den. A little bit of a pop on the open from Meta. Not that bad. Down by 1.6%. You got the NASDAQ 100 down a little bit more than that. We talked about the big stocks, right? Ooh, look at Amazon getting a little bit of a bounce, man. Not bad when you get a bounce and you're only down 1.9%, right? Still quite a haircut. Microsoft down 2.1. All these equities bouncing a little bit on the open, though. Apple down by 1.2. We check out NVIDIA shares down by 1.2 as well. All right, we jump around to some of the other companies out. Hasbro stock plunges after revenue drop and a downbeat outlook. Now, this was before the market, so watch out. Look at that, man. They get it back. Unbelievable, man. This thing was down to 43 bucks, and just like that, you're back to 50 The market saves itself. Not sure what they talked about on the conference call, but the market must have liked it. Whew. They lost a billion dollars, man. Yeah, more than a 20% hit to its fourth quarter revenue. I don't know what they were talking about, but they must have plans for the equity to be almost flat on a day like we have going on right now in the market. They're going to cut $750 million in cost by the end of 225, and there's probably what did it, man, cost cutting. Yeah, earn, earnings, though. Boy, talk about taking a hit. 38 versus 66. Now, we talked about earnings per share yesterday, right, in the market and how it's priced. Well, that's the reason why when you look about backwards earnings and forward earnings that you can see the difference in terms of how that may change. All right, and we got a caller on the line. We got our man Mike from Somerville. Mike, good morning. Good to hear from you, man. What's happening? Tommy, how are you, buddy? Doing good, man. Always here to uh, good to hear that voice of yours, man. How's how's beautiful Somerville this uh, this morning? Well, I'm Mike from Somerville, but I live in Wilmington. Remember? <laughs> That's right. Of course. Did you guys get some of that right. that 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 snowstorm, man? How you doing? You hanging in there? Yeah, they cut it down about three inches, buddy. I was hoping for about a foot. I'm not even a skier. I just wanted a foot of snow. But now they're talking like uh, four to six now. Okay. Well, hang in there, man. Listen, so what are we talking about? Listen, are we talking about this market? What are you I looking have, at, Mike? I have two things that I have to say to you, Tom, okay? One of them is one of the worst mistakes I've ever made in my life, all right? And number two, I apologize to you. And you want to know why? Because Why? when you started your newsletter, I didn't sign up when I could have got that deal. And I didn't sign up. And now I have to pay today. I'm joining your newsletter, and I have to pay up for you right now. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Mike. And uh, listen, there's, as we know, listen, you're a funny man, man. There's bigger deals in life, and we all get second chances, man. And hopefully you enjoy it. And if you don't, we got a 30-day money-back guarantee, Mike. And there's no shame in the game, man, like I say. Uh, I appreciate you trying it, no matter what, but, man. Listen, I'm joining today, buddy. You look for my name. I'm joining your newsletter today, I love pal. It, man. I, I didn't love realize it. how good you were going to be. Listen to you, man. Listen to you talking me up. I love it. Um, so what do you what do you think of this buddy. market, That's man? Tell I'm me. I'm putting what do you... my money where my mouth is, buddy. I'm buying hey, your newsletter today. Listen, I'm tell me what you think today. about this market. I know you're watching it. What do you think about this market sitting at 5,000, Mike? Tell, give me a perspective. What do you think? I'm short up to my eyeballs right okay. now, Tom, and I'm a happy <laughs> right. person right now. I bet, man. Quite a day, for sure. 
Well, make sure you keep your stops in place, man, because we got some volatility in both directions, I think, coming down the line for, for a foreseeable future, man. Um, this is not going to go away in one month, as again, they need to see some trends. And boy, we, we almost like right. not got to restart that trend right now. But boy, we got we got some work to do um, for sure. No, no, that's that's kind of what I was asking you, buddy. I'm not. Listen, the one thing I don't do and you don't do is you don't brag on one lousy day that, that you're making money. I know that, buddy. That burns me more times whenever I've done it. You know what I mean? I, so, I, we all what know you what think? you mean, man. You, you feel you like think, a king buddy? when things you, are going you right. Think we can get a little bit of a trend down here. I think we can, man. Hang on. Can you hang on? We'll finish it up right. after the break. Yeah. Okay, hang yeah. on, folks. We're going to talk to the market. We're talking to our man Mike from Somerville. We got the S&Ps down 1.4%, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Mike. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down by 70 points right now. And we're talking to our man, Mike, from Somerville. And we're talking markets, baby. And I love that accent, Mike. My dad's texting me saying, I love that Boston accent. My man, Mike, from Somerville, he's listening as well, Mike. Uh, you got to love it, man. And I, I love always father, buddy. And I, I love always father, and he knows I it. always appreciate I listen, I'm always excited when I see you in the caller log, man. Ah, it's Mike. Let's talk. So, yeah, let's, you know, listen, 
it's it's not rocket science, Mike. I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah, I I probably agree on a risk reward basis, especially when it seems like the data is coming out that's a little bit more difficult than we maybe have imagined. I mean, I just have the S and P's up here on a daily basis. You know, even a three eight two just of the run from October brings you back to forty seven oh nine which is 270 points below where we're at right now. I mean, that wouldn't be outlandish. Um, are you looking, when you say short, are you like S&P? Are you in the NASDAQ, Mike? Are you in the Dow? Where are you kind of shorting? Are you in the market? Are you in different equities? What are you, what are you doing to be short? Buddy, I bought, I bought the TZA this morning at 7.02. Okay. I'm, in, uh, I'm short the S&P. I'm short the Dow. I'm short the uh, NASDAQ. I'm short All the All right, you, gotta, you got I'm the board short, covered. I'm SOXS. Yeah, I'm I would doing hey, everything, Tom. Just the, the reason why I say the stops, Mike, only because we're going to get these types of moves, man, and you're going to get plenty of opportunities. So it's not going to be a one way trip, man. You got, you know, one and a half percent on the S&P today. You got, geez, the Russell, three point seven percent today in the Russell on the S&P on a daily basis. And today we've already done five hundred and eighty thousand on the futures yesterday, the whole day. We did 1.1 million, so we're going to blow that away, man. Um, it's not even 10 o'clock. So, yeah, I, I think you're in the right spot. Just keep those stops in place because we're going to have plenty of opportunities to catch this volatility for the next months uh, as we go forward, man. This thing ain't stopping right now. I think we know that. Listen, you just look for my name on your newsletter, buddy, because I will be reading your newsletter tomorrow. What does it come out? One, every day or once a week, buddy? It comes out weekly, but and, and you know what? I'm going to get a special. We're going to put out an update just for you, Mike. I'm going to talk to you today. We'll get it done, baby. All right? Love you, buddy. I'm Love real. You. That's happening. You Listen, you made my day, Mike. Thanks so much, man. Have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. We got markets rocking, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Stay tuned.